All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another uh, episode of Fresh Start, which is a ministry of Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we, you can find us at se, the number seven, the word day, dot org. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Roku. Uh, we also have other services for those who uh, are not uh, savvy or uh, good with the internet. We do have call-in numbers where you, a call-in number where you can listen to our services as well. All you have to do is get in touch with us. We're in Cleveland, Ohio, and this is a Bible study uh, based on the doctrines of our church. It's from the special edition of Sign of the Times called We Believe. It's a brief look at the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You can find that publication for almost nothing. It's cheap at AdventistBookCenter.com or you can just contact us at Southeast in Cleveland. Okay, so we are in a new cycle, but doesn't mean that we're gonna be repetitive. We're gonna enjoy ourselves studying the fundamental beliefs of the Bible. The, uh, so it's the start of something new. Tonight, we're on lesson number three, God the Father. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy toward us. We ask, Lord, that you make it clear, that you make it plain who you are and what you have in store for your people. We ask, Lord, that you bless this lesson, the hearer and the participants. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, let's get started. Here is something you can screenshot. We're not going to go through all of this, uh, but it's good. To, uh, we've been showing this for the first three lessons. You can take a nice little picture of this, and it'll walk you through um, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's so interesting that there are still people that insist that there is no Godhead, there's just the Father. And uh, but scripture says otherwise, and here are plenty of them, uh, making the distinction between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what I love about it is it's both the Old Testament and the New Testament bearing witness to who God is. All right, just left that there for a little while, just so people can take a screenshot or pause your video uh, to write these scriptures down. Okay, all right, so moving right along. Okay, here is uh, some interesting information for God from GodOrAbsurdity.com. Proof that God exists from morality. Okay, it says that number one, Objective morality cannot exist without God, or objective morality exists. Therefore, God exists. Sounds like a term paper, doesn't it? <laughs> All it's really saying is the desire to do good can only come from God. If there is no God, there is no border or boundary within our minds of how far we'll go with how we treat each other. That is proof that God exists. All right, any thoughts on that before we get into the lesson tonight? All right, no thoughts on that. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so part one, he's the creator, talking about God the Father. Anybody wanna read for us tonight? Anyone? Anyone? Sure, I'll read for you tonight. Thank you. Sorry, that's I came all. late. Diane, that's all right. You're right on time. We we're praying, though. <laughs> Amen. Um, he's the creator. Um, many people, tired of the culture of self, are looking for something better, something more satisfying. They want to know him. For that reason, he has revealed himself in many ways, the most important of which is the Bible. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The Bible writers made no direct effort to prove the existence of God. They took that much for granted. 
The Bible's first words, quote, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, unquote. Genesis chapter one, verse one. Speak volumes about him. Amen. He's the creator. Into existence, God existed. He's the creator, the source of life and every material blessing. Amen. Wow. So, so that's a lot to ask, right? Of someone who uh, doesn't know God, doesn't have a relationship with him. You know, it's a, it's a little children's question, right? Who created God? Okay. And uh, what will we say about that? If somebody asks who created God or, or uh, anything along those lines, what would you say? Anyone, not just you, Diane. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> Anybody. Diane, of course, you can answer. Sister Parker, go ahead. I would say he always was. There mm -hmm. is none before him. He always was. Mm -hmm. And anything beyond that, I really, you can't really explain that because he always was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm with you, Brother Parker. I would say that <clears throat> before anything was, God is. Mm -hmm. Because he is the creator of everything. Mm -hmm. And people, a lot of people say, well, you have to have a lot of faith to accept that. And I always answer them, when you sit down on that chair, you think the chair is going to hold you, correct? Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, right. I say, that's faith. Mm -hmm. And then they look at you like you just spoke Chinese or something mm -hmm. because they have no answer for it. And that's how God is. God has always been there. Mm -hmm. And it takes faith to believe that God is and mm -hmm. that he is the creator. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, brother. Brother Mike. Mike? Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Mike. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, no, you're not mute. I don't know why I can't hear you. Okay, well, maybe we can, when you, we figure it out, you can come back. Okay, uh, iPhone. Yeah, Pastor, I would say he's a self-existent God. And, yeah. you know, as everybody, I agree with what everyone is saying. And when I came to the knowledge of God, I always like, so where did God come from? And I always trying to think and wonder. But I go back to Deuteronomy 29, 29, and it says, you know, the secret things of God, you know, are kept secret. And what he wants us to know, he will reveal to us. So I just shut up there. And I, when I get to heaven, I will know. Yes, indeed. Well, that's a long answer that I have is uh, who said that people are supposed to know and understand everything? Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, if you, you, if you could transport back to 1970 now with your cell phone, they might call you a witch, right? <laughs> what is this? What is it? That, that's, that's, that they, would, they wouldn't be able to conceive it. Right. Then, or, or you take airplanes back to 1600, uh, you know, it would scare them to death. They would probably think it was an alien invasion. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no way that we should approach everything as if if we don't understand it, it can't be true. And then, Pastor, Revelation speaks about, you know, that we when we get to heaven, We'll be, you know, spending ceaseless ages of eternity ever learning. Yes. You know, ever learning about all what we need to know back then. You know, we're going to be learning. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. All right. Brother Mike, you back? Come on back. The Millers? Can y'all hear him? I can't hear him. And no, they can't hear you. Either. No, I can't hear. Okay, Mike, I hope we get that worked out. It doesn't say that you're muted. It's something, something on your device that's not bringing sound through. Try to turn the audio up or something. Just rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Mike, and let it start working. Yes, yes, amen, amen. 
All right, Sister Diane, if you could come on back, let's go to our next section and hopefully we'll catch up with Mike a little later. Okay. What we can't know. Nevertheless, there's much about God's basic nature that we don't understand because he hasn't revealed it to us. Yeah. She just said that. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Among these unknowns are God's eternal nature and his capacity to be everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. We can never understand the essence of God's nature, but we understand what he was or what he has revealed to us at least to the point, and this revelation centers around his un unfailing love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The mm -hmm. New Testament presents God to us as a living or a loving heavenly father. We can find that in Matthew 5, verse 45, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Because Jesus has adopted us, we have become God's sons and daughters. You can see that in John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. God, our heavenly father, is not a mere impersonal force. Mm -hmm. Yes, just pause just for a second, Diana. We're on, uh, on uh, lesson three uh, about God to call God the father. Somebody was asking what page are we on? I don't have my book in front of me, but we're on lesson three. Okay, go That's ahead. me. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, Diane. Um, okay, so um, Jesus told the woman at the well, uh, Sincher, is that how you say that? I, that yeah, I don't know. That's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that um, God is spirit. We'll find that in John chapter 4, verse 4, 24, to suggest that God has a form, a shape. This statement has to do with more, more profound aspects of God's divine nature. He's above nature. Amen. He's above nature and beyond the capacity of our minds to imagine him. He lives on a plane far superior to ours. Well, boy, these first lessons are fast. Okay, any thoughts about what uh, what we just read? It seems since we've been through the deeper lessons, it seems like this one is going by fast. Okay, Sister Audrey, go right ahead. Uh, yes, when we try to put God in a box, and the box of I'm saying of our knowledge, mm -hmm. um, that's where we err. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying that God is we can't, we don't know everything mm -hmm. uh, and we're limited in our knowledge. And for us to try to express what God is, uh, even in scripture, uh, it's not totally revealed to us. So we mm -hmm. have to take it on faith and, 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 uh, and accept God the Father as all knowing and all unrevealing. He, mm. he reveals what we really need to know. But mm -hmm. as I say, the uh, studying scripture is the best way to obtain knowledge about God the Father, instead of trying to think on our own and, and use what we know as experience in describing him. If we stick to the scriptures, then we, we won't uh, have less error in our knowledge, in our association and relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, 100%, I agree. Okay, Sister Parker. I think adding, that's to, adding to what was said, uh, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. We cannot yes. uh, stand up and uh, be equal to God. Right. And in Exodus, uh, 33 and uh, let me see, 21. And the Lord said, behold, there is a, no, no, and 20. And he said, thy cannot see my face. Well, there shall no man see me and live. You see, he put he put uh, 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 stipulations and the boundaries right there. 
can no man see me and live. He's all power. He's all authority. He's all wisdom. He's all wise. But that which he let us know of him. I think that's a mighty, mighty great blessing. And in order to know him, we got to establish that relationship. And the deeper that relationship go, the greater he reveals himself to us as his people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen and amen. Brother Parker. I agree with what everyone was saying that what popped to my mind while this uh, passage was being read and reading along with it. This is how a lot of philosophers got all messed up, mixed up, and demon possessed because they were trying to figure out who God is, where mm -hmm. he came from, where is he going, what does he mean? They did not take it by faith as Abraham did when God told Abraham to leave his family and go to a land he was showing. Mm -hmm. God expects us to accept him strictly by his word, strictly mm -hmm. by faith, knowing that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When we study the Bible for knowledge, we miss a lot. Mm -hmm. When we study the Bible to understand God's word and what he wants us to do, we gain knowledge because it's foolishness to those who are wise. Mm -hmm. The things of the Bible are foolish to, to people who think they're wise and trying to give more wisdom to contradict things. Mm -hmm. But when we study the word of God to understand God, that's when we become wise because we're not trying to do it just for mental exercise, but we're doing it for spiritual growth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Mike. No. Mike, we still can't hear you. Is that just me or do y'all hear Mike? No, I can't hear yeah. him either. Okay. I don't hear. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe you should type it in, Mike. Okay, Sister Diane, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, and knowing the character of God, knowing who he is by what he has given us for promises and how he's fulfilled those promises. And I don't know if it was through this Bible study or for another. I get I get Bible studies confused. So if I repeat myself, forgive me. No problem. Uh, <laughs> maybe we need it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, God is an, an impersonal force. When we're reading that part, that's pretty uh, that's pretty powerful. There's this one person, I wish I remembered his name. He said, I couldn't believe, I, I wouldn't be able to believe in a God who was immune to our pain. Mm. And that, that is so insightful because not only God is our creator, he's all powerful, all knowing, and he's present everywhere. He also is personal and he knows our pain. Yeah. And um, I want you, I knew, was it one of, in a, one of our Bible studies where we talked about this, where Mm -hmm. um, this person just spoke about how, how could I believe in a God that didn't understand what I was going through and all the things that I have? I wouldn't be able to believe. I wouldn't want to believe in a God that could not be part of me. Mm -hmm. so, um, was it us? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Probably. I mean, we got two of them going, so I get lost too, Diane. But it sounds good to me. So we'll go with that. We'll say you said it. We'll start with you. <laughs> that sounds good. Amen. <laughs> All right, Sister Patricia, go ahead. Yes, um, John chapter 10, 30. It says, I and the Father are one. So when you see Jesus, you see God. Mm -hmm. You know, because God is in Jesus, Jesus is in God. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not I'm not about to argue with you. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they are not the same person. They're not okay. Uh, yeah, but what he's saying is that uh, they they have the same will, they have the same attributes, uh, the same character. There's harmony between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Oh, okay. Thanks. I wasn't clear, but you know, thought it was the same. 
Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's a, because I mean, when you look at that one text, that sounds like that's what it's saying, you know. But when we start to put them all together, we realize yeah. they're distinct persons, three distinct persons. All okay. right, well, that's what we work on. No, no problem. Thank you for speaking up, Sister Audrey. Uh, yes, I just want to touch on when you said proof of God's exists from morality uh, in the New Testament that pre presents God to us as a living, a uh, loving Heavenly Father. And mm -hmm. He created within mind of uh, mankind the essence and the openness of love that that we had discussed in our earlier lesson regarding the need a compelling um, need of love that we need to show to each other. This is something that has been created in us. We say God is the creator of life and that this is one of the reasons why we set boundaries that compel us uh, to ourselves. Like we were talking about putting limits on our actions and what have you. Mm -hmm. It says um, that morality exists and it exists through God the Father creating within mankind this type of character. And I just yeah. wanted to bring that out. Yeah, well, it, it, that really answers uh, in some way Patricia's question, right? Uh, that, you know, when Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, that should also be our prayer. When we come in contact with people, when they see God working in us, they we we really don't want them to see us so much. We want them to see the God we serve by uh, how we live, how we move, and and evidence of His Spirit in us. And and if we went deeper into that, uh, we would go all into how Jesus, before He started His day. Uh, he spent time communing with his father in prayer, you know, asking the Lord to order his steps that day and to reveal to him his will for that day. Those are things we can do, right? When you say that, Audrey? Yes, yes, I would say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each and every day, because uh, that is one of the things of sanctification. We're working on our character uh, and mm -hmm. our character it's less of us, less of our selfishness and uh, releasing our selfishness and putting on the righteousness of Christ and mm -hmm. the, through the Holy Spirit. So all three is working within the mm -hmm. sanctification process of our life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I love the fact that Patricia brought that up because when they asked Jesus how to pray, Part of it was not my will, but thy will be done. Isn't that correct? Correct. And uh, introduce like our father. We're part of the family. Yeah. As you say, we're our God's sons and daughters. So we address him as our father. Mm -hmm. Our it, father who art in heaven. Yeah. And it's intimate and reciprocal. So Lord, forgive us as we forgive others. And so there's a circular thing happening there. Lord, when I reflect your character, uh, bless me in the way that you said you would. You said you would forgive me if I act like you, if I uh, love and forgive and show patience and long suffering, you would do the same with me. And really it should be because he's already done that for us. You know, if we really take a look at our lives, there's so much that could have gone wrong and so much that we've been guilty of. And yet he continues to bless us uh, again and again and again. And uh, I remember talking to someone uh, and it's like, that's just too convenient, you know, uh, you know, that, that you can't see him and this, that, and the other. And, and every, you give him credit for everything. I remember distinctly having this conversation with a guy, he was a, a PK too. He was like, I, why we got to give God credit for all our hard work, you know? So that was an interesting conversation. Uh, go ahead, Sister Veronica. No, I just wanted to add just um, something quickly, you know, is sure. the process of growing in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, each and every day we should be growing in Christ. 
and, you know, reaching that level of um, spirituality, you know, and um, freely, freely, we also give, get from Christ, we should freely give, mm -hmm. you know, we should be the conduits of his love, you know, and try to, to help everyone and just, you know, live as one big happy family, because we're all trying to get to heaven. We are all trying to get to heaven and we just have to love on each other, care for each other, be there for each other. Because this is the way we show God character, you know, by, you know, having the mind of Christ and being like him. And that's what we should all be striving for. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. So let's uh, go on here. All right. <laughs> Third section here is God is a person. You okay, Diane? Yes, that's fine. Yes. Uh, Mike did put uh, his comment in the chat box that there is no one or being above God. Oh, thank you, Mike. That's what he wanted us to know. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's our discussion now. Uh, I think we've been having it somewhat. What is God like? What is God like? What do you think? Or have we been discussing it all along? Well, we I think what we discussed. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Diane. Oh, <laughs> well, we, we're saying that He's all powerful, and we know that He's loving God. Uh, he, we, we want to be a witness for Him, out of our love for Him. We become more loving to others. Um, we know that he's um, very real, and we also know that he um, uh, he can. He, he, there's so much that he knows that we only get only a part of it. We we can only be revealed from what he gives us. We also know he's our father, so there's a family that comes with it. Um, mm -hmm. Many things that God is. It's like a counselor. <laughs> um all powerful um i don't know it keeps going <laughs> amen amen you did real well brother parker i was going to say that everything we have been discussing has been actually what god is like mm -hmm. simply because when you start talking about god's attributes his character and things like that, you can't help but think about how wise he is just from reading his word. And you listen to the words of Christ and read the words of Christ and see how Christ acted. He said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So mm -hmm. you know what God is like. Mm -hmm. Everything we talked about beforehand is describing what God is like. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you, sir. Sister Audrey. God has made himself available in human attributes, like listening when we talk to each other so that we know how to communicate with him. He listens, he hears, um, he is, makes himself available, not that he sits high and, and, and we're down here and there is no communication. As we studied before in the, the Trinity, uh, all the Godhead moves within each other like a fine machine in, in so many words. You know, they each rely on each other. They think and they move, but each has a, a part. And the Father is the one that we service and worship through the other, um, through the Son and through the Holy Spirit. So I would say that the father is, is, makes himself available. He feel, he can fear, feel things, he hears, he's listening. And uh, it's something that is loving and makes us want to know more of him because of the love that we're receiving from him. So it makes us feel more comfortable and makes it he makes it available that we can approach him. And so yeah. that is what God is like. He's not like a stone or 
other gods and pagan stones or what have you that does not have any relationship. So that's what I'm trying to say, uh, what God is like. Beautiful, beautiful. Mike and Missy say God is pure love. That's what they put in the chat. Uh, uh, Diane said he is consistent and does not change. Isn't that the truth? You know, what I was thinking about is uh, a real glimpse of God's character is how he handles his power. You know, we as humans, we can't handle a little bit of power. You know, we could be supervisor on the job. We might lose the job just acting crazy. <laughs> you know, turn their body into slaves, you know, and imagine all that God can do, yet his character won't let him do it. That's an amazing thing. All right, let's go on now, Sister Diane. Okay, so God is a person. The Hebrew concept of spirit was more concrete than abstract. God dwells in the realm. We cannot see him, but we were made in his image. Genesis 1, verse 27 which suggests that he also has a specific form. The Bible presents God as a person. The words the Bible uses to describe God were chosen to make it easy uh, or as easy as possible for us to understand God as a person. He talks, hears, sees, and writes. He suffers and he feels sadness. And he also expresses both anger and joy. I delight to do your will, oh my God. Your law is within my heart. Yes. Psalms 40, chapter 8. I mean, verse 8. Amen. Mm -mm. Amen. Beautiful. Free will. Now, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is in Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Acadia. Close enough. Uh, uh, all right, uh, Sister Acadia. Veronica, go ahead. <laughs> yes, um, I think it's the slide, two slide before that. It just caught my attention when she was reading. It said, God, um, he writes, he hears, he sees, he, he does all these things. And that's what make it our God you know, um, different from the heathen God, from the pagan God, because the pagan God, they have eyes, they can't see, they have ears, they can't hear, they have hands, and they can't feel. So that's how, you know, our God is so personal. You know, he, he is such a personal God, such a loving God. That's why David said, I think it's David that wrote, come taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, yes. Was yes. it David? Excellent. I think it was, right? It was definitely uh, a song. So It was one of the songs. <laughs> yeah. It really was come this. taste and see. Mm -hmm. You know, so reading God's word, you know, reading yes. God's word and just being, you know, in that relationship with God makes you feel so alive you know just feel so love and just mm -hmm. just it just give you a different feeling altogether just to have that personal relationship just to know that somebody's in your corner 24 7 who loves you and is there for you always beautiful thank you uh elder pam elder elderman yes uh i see you see that talks here sees and writes are in quotation Mm -hmm. so God doesn't talk, hear, see, and write like we do. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't have ears to hear and eyes to see, mm -hmm. and fingers to write. When it says that God wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger, it's not literally a finger. So there's a whole, whole difference between how we perceive what talking, hearing, and seeing, and writing means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's certainly biblical evidence for what you're saying, uh, you know, uh, for the uh, freed slaves coming out of Egypt, these sounded like thunder, you know, so, uh, so yes, that's a very good point. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't know who this is down here with the baby feet, I can't tell. Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, so glad. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I didn't see a name, go ahead. Okay, I, I didn't know my name wasn't up there. Yeah, I think is, of, yeah. Oh, okay. 
God is big enough to cover the whole world, yet small enough to reach each and every one of us individually, small mm. enough to be a man, small enough to be a woman, small mm. enough to call us his friend. He says, we are his friend. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. That is a great point, Gladys, because we normally think two-dimensional, and if we're really bright, three-dimensional, but God's dimensions are limitless. He's not bound by the box, as I think Audrey said earlier, that we want to put him in. Very good. Uh, and also, as well, uh, Dr. Pan. Uh, brother, uh, uh, my mind went crazy on Parker. Brother Parker, go ahead. <laughs> you know, when I, I was listening to what uh, Sister Elgimo was saying what, and what everybody else was saying, Mm -hmm. And I look at the talk here, sees, and writes. Mm -hmm. Now, we already talked about him writing with his finger the ten, on the stones, mm -hmm. the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Now, think about Jeremiah when he told Jeremiah to go into the temple and see what the priests and the women were doing mm -hmm. and how they were calling out unto gods that were not gods. Mm -hmm. He talked to Jeremiah. He heard what the people were saying, and he also saw what they were doing. And so that means he felt sadness and he mm -hmm. was angry. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus expressed the joy and the suffering that God feels when people either praise him or deny him. Mm -hmm. So everything that is on the screen in yellow, it can be found scripturally in the word of God. Yeah. Because God has attributes, as somebody always said, which are far above ours. Mm -hmm. They were praying to idols that were made of wood, stone, gold, silver, whatever. And those idols could not do anything. And mm -hmm. Elijah proved it when he went against the prophets of Baal. But mm -hmm. God answered, so he spoke with fire mm -hmm. from heaven. God don't necessarily have to speak with words. Mm -hmm. He can speak through nature itself. So God is limitless. Mm -hmm. I think someone else said that already. God is limitless. He doesn't have to limit himself to a human type of expression. Mm -hmm. He can do it any way he chooses. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a great point. So when we put all these things together, from Veronica to uh, Pam, um, and, and on so on, um, God uh, makes this plan of salvation about us. He wants us to understand, uh, get a glimpse into his love for us. So he uses things that are familiar with us to communicate with us. And, uh, and, and at the same time, we're in awe of it because he's not limited to that. But he, he, he didn't think it robbery to come down on our level because that's just how much he loves us, right? All right. All right. Uh, Elder Pam. And even his anger, his anger is not like our anger. That's the good. The Bible point. says his anger is he's slow to anger. And mm -hmm. his anger is against uh, sin and evil in the, in the world. That's mm -hmm. what his anger is. If there was no sin or evil, God would not have to show his righteous anger because mm -hmm. he's righteous and just and mm -hmm. against all sin, that's mm -hmm. anger. He's not like our petty anger where we get angry if somebody cuts in front of us on the highway. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same anger either. That is an excellent point because his, his uh, attributes are not sinful. Ours can be. <laughs> you know, so, but that's not where he's coming from. Sister Gladys, go ahead. You know, the Bible says fear God is fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But mm -hmm. some people take that to the extreme and think they should be afraid mm -hmm. of God, afraid because he's so powerful. He might hurt. He might, you know, do something in a, in a negative, be, be very negative. But that word fear means to be in reverence to give him awe, to give him worship, to give him praise. That's the beginning of, of wisdom. That's the beginning of knowledge. And he wants us to, to have a relationship with him. That's why he 
um, decided to 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 come down here to 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 see for us to see feel hear touch you know and 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 so you know he, he he's he's in tune with us he says he's numbered the hairs on our head he knows us right. he says right. he knows our name he said he's taken our tears and bottled them up he mm. knows us he says i i know the plans i have for you so we have a, a, a the most high is a relation a relationship god he wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us in our own way with him nobody's the same our relationships with him are not is not the same we're all different mm -hmm. excellent excellent thank you so much you guys are really ministering tonight i don't really need to say much and let y'all go with it okay uh okay i think this is where we were diane and we're gonna go ahead and go to the finish line okay you want me to read this again Oh, you read it already. I read that part, but it seemed like it didn't end right. It was there. Oh, because it was see that 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 uh, colon. colon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was these these scriptures are just trying to say that talk about the will of God. It's just All pointing right. out that part of the text. And I say, oh, here you go, right here. This uh, Psalm seven eleven. So God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. <laughs> wow. Glad Sister Pam explained that beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah 55, chapter or verse 7 says, He pardons. Uh, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon mm -hmm. uh, go right ahead oh uh revelation 19 6 he's omnipotent and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thunderings saying alleluia for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Amen. 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 Omnipotent. Amen. Omniscient is in Ephesians chapter 1, 8, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Amen. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, he's eternal. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, and only wise God, the only wise God, be honored and glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Every time somebody reads that, I hear music in my head for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister Parker, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I was listening to what Diane was reading, and omnipotence the knowing everything having unlimited understanding or knowledge and god is all power and i thought about that i said and he, the trinity as to him he's in the trinity he's the head of the trinity and even jesus christ don't know when he's going to return that's one thing that god has held for himself he's all power he's all power and that's one thing until the time for his return that's when he will reveal it to him amen. amen amen and i looked at that and that really blew my mind because god is god he's all power here the son is with him praise god and here he has not revealed this until the appropriate time for him to come back to receive us as his people omnipotent mm -hmm. you know son Praise God. Only God has that power and that authority. And only God knows that. But when the time comes, he will reveal it to his son. Isn't it awesome, Sister Parker, that, Jesus, that Jesus submits to that power? Hey, glow. He's not angry about yes. it or jealous yes. of it. No. He, and and they all the Trinity's father. together. The Trinity's mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And God, he's the only power. He's the voice of it all. All right, all right. And when it happens, uh, that's our glorious day. Mm. Okay, uh, all right. Don't, I tell don't you, start it up in here, Reverend. 
<laughs> hey, wow. mm-hmm. I'm a child. <laughs> yes, I'm, wow, 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 wow. I could be around you and sisterhood all my <laughs> life. And one thing y'all keep from me until the time for it to happen. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Ooh, my, 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 my. Mm. Amen. Lord, hallelujah. Amen. I don't even know where we were. Oh, okay. We were right around here somewhere. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, omnipresent. Psalms 139, verse 7. Whither shall I go for thy or from thy spirit? Oh, I should I re- whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. I was just kind of waiting on the on another sermon because he did good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Jeremiah 23, verse 24, omnipresent. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Wow. Mm -hmm. Back to what uh, Elder Pam was saying is that we got to remember, though God connects with us with things we understand, it doesn't mean he's limited or the, or or uh, or it's exactly the same as us. That was a very good comment, Brother Parker. I was looking at that. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Hmm. And think about that for a minute. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Satan thinks that this world belongs to him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but who mm-hmm. feels it? Who feels it? God feels it. Satan is the prince of the past. He's the prince of the power of the air. Mm-hmm. But doesn't God feel heaven? Mm-hmm. Satan yeah. has no control over nothing. He just thinks he does and wants yeah. us to think he does. Mm-hmm. God is omnipresent. He mm-hmm. is everywhere. Well, the way I see not- that, Brother Parker, is a, a companion verse with that because evil certainly exists. Yes, but here's the verse to go with it. Every good and perfect gift perfect. comes from comes the from Lord. Below. So and even in the midst of evil, God is still doing good all day, every day, twenty all days. all day long. Mm-hmm. He is every, and, and that that should encourage us more than ever to know, even if we already knew it, to have it refresh in our mind that there's no place we can go. God does not see us. Going back to the part we talked about earlier, He sees mm-hmm. everywhere on this earth, no matter where we are. We can be up in a plane, forty thousand feet in the air. Mm-hmm. God is there. You yes. can just say I'm a little bit closer to Him. That's all, because you're uh, a little bit higher from the earth. But either yeah. way it goes, God is there, and we should understand with that mm-hmm. that God has us in the hollow of His hand. He has us protected. Because he controls everything. Satan can do nothing without God's permission. Because God fills heaven and earth. Excellent. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Sister Gladys, go right ahead. You know, the question should be, how big is your God? Is he big mm-hmm. enough to intervene? Mm-hmm. Is he big enough to be trusted? Yeah. Is he big enough to, to erase your worries and replace them with peace? But when, when your God is too small, you know, your problems then become too big mm. and, and you retreat in fear and you become insecure and you don't know what to do and you panic. But but when your God is great, when he's big, when he's awesome, you know, your problems become insignificant. They become small and you begin to worship and your worship brings you to a peaceful place where your cup runneth over, where he leads you beside the still waters, Mm -hmm. where grace and mercy, goodness and mercy is following you. And, and, and so the question is, how big is your God? All right. All right. All right. I'm going to put y'all on the preaching schedule. Y'all keep preaching. Sister Audrey, go ahead. Yeah. Omnipresent. (laughs) Our God, as you said, uh, to piggyback on what uh, brother Parker was saying that God loves all. And, it, mm-hmm. and his love reigns on the uh, just as well as the unjust. Yes. And I want people to realize that as we're studying this lesson, that it's not just for the righteous, 
that he wants all to be in, included in the family, all to be in his family. And so that is the hope that we have and we have to share it with others that God loves all. He makes no different preference on any. And he says he's omnipresent, he's all powerful, all wisdom. And I just want to share that thought. Amen, excellent, excellent. There was a question in the chat said, so then why does evil exist? And it's simply God's permissive will. He does not force us to obey him even though he would rather we not, he still gives us a choice. Okay, you change your mind, uh, Elder Pam? Yes, you already saw that a question and answered it. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Well, let's roll on. This is the summary. Uh, you guys have been fantastic tonight. The question was asked before, what is God like? And so now we're answering it with this image. <laughs> uh, uh, and so um, I, I, I hope and pray that those who have, uh, have uh, been watching, that you have been encouraged by what the people on the panel have said tonight, because I have. I, I mean, there's some very powerful comments tonight. And in particular, I'm really happy that we were recording tonight because it can serve as a source of encouragement and strength if you're down, uh, if things have happened in your life where it causes you to question whether or not God loves you, uh, we're here to tell you don't doubt it. You know, the, the ups and downs of life uh, does not affect how God sees you. Even if you failed and it's all your fault, it doesn't mean that God has given up on you. He doesn't. God doesn't send anyone away from him. People just choose to walk away. And just like he chose that, you can choose to seek him, to come near him, to ask him. He says, test me. Make me prove that I love you. Now, what an awesome, there is no other God like that. that says, try me and see if I am who I say that I am. He is the greatest forgiver ever. So it's a good time to test it and see. Lord, if you're real, show me you're real. Lord, if I'm forgiven, let me know that I am forgiven. And I promise you, he'll do it for you as he's done it for all these people who were talking tonight. God is on the throne. He's not dead. He is still God. He is free of time and space, limited, uh, limitation in all its actions. Everything that happens on this planet is under God's control, as Brother Parker said earlier. The qualities and powers that we see in God, the Son and the Holy Spirit, reveal to us what the Father is like. To answer your question earlier, Sister Patricia, in the beginning in Hebrew, all the actions of creation are in plural. It kept saying Elohim, meaning G-O-D-S, let us make man, right? In the beginning, gods, meaning Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Spirit moved upon the earth. The Father spoke from heaven, and Jesus walked in the garden. All three are one, and yet they are three distinct personalities. But the Father is the head of them all. And I'm glad about that. All right, next time we're going to talk about God the Son. God the Son on the next time. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for a wonderful discussion with our panel tonight. I pray that it goes far beyond the blessing that it's been for us as a group. I pray that the people who need to see this see it just in time to see that you are a loving God and you can perform the miracle of a changed heart, that you can restore, you can forgive, you can make sadness, gladness, you can make the dead live. And so Lord, prove yourself to those who need you, who seek you in Jesus name, amen, amen. All amen. right, amen. we wanna thank our panel tonight for being so gracious and participating. It's been a wonderful time.